are you halfway there, three quarters of the way? You know, well, what's your milestones towards your architecture of vision? And we don't capture that anywhere, and that was one of the goals of the performance reference model and the ASSR. But then the holy grail of milestones is what does it matter? And you know, have you done some business improvement? And so if out of this new what will be performance dashboard, if we can get to that, but across the board, I think we need you know wholesale <coughs> training on how to put milestones together and how to put milestones that you share with O and B uh, in context to something real, you know. And oftentimes, milestones shared with O and B are easy to make. Um, so, uh, and then you know, it's like, what are you really trying to do? And is it okay to have a stretch goal in there? But um, but I think mechanically, what John has up on the slide here is really important to, and this, you know, because no one's ever looked at this picture. And it's messy because it is messy, and nothing connects. Uh, and if we can't do the data harmonization in our own world, we can't be preaching that to the rest of the business units. So I, I think we have to do this. Thanks, John. Great, thanks, John. John and I have obviously talked about this for, uh, quite a bit, and uh, so I felt very comfortable going to him on, uh, you know, on this particular topic. Anybody disagree? Anybody? Anybody? Has, <coughs> anybody here who is who has developed a three hundred? Okay, there's a couple of people. Okay, is there some semblance of a story that you have to tell in your three hundreds? I mean, I think that John makes a good point. You know, we're, we're, we're writing these things up and we're providing information to kind of get past this, this particular, you know, threshold of activity. Not that it's, it's going to provide us with a tremendous amount of uh, value, but we know that we have to address certain things in certain ways and, and over the years we've become actually pretty good at developing the prose that does that. And so, you know, I, I think that there is, you know, a part of this that is telling the story. And, and it's not about managing the investment and the information that you need to manage is. Yes. Um, my question is, um, who are the audience of the dashboard we are talking about right now? OMB? or our agency CIO, uh, this perspective. We were, we were struggling about uh, developing dashboard for our own CIO. Um, we were thinking about what kind of information CIO will be interested. You are a CIO. <laughs> what you are interested for your purpose. We want to create an um, informed management that uh, you can always use and in real time. What is that informed management that will help CIO? I really didn't pay her to say that. <laughs> that this is, but this is exactly the point. You know, what is the dashboard for? Is it just a reporting mechanism? Another box that we need to check to satisfy some, uh, some requirement from OMB? I mean, I would suggest that it's not in particular because it's visible to the public. I mean, that, that changes everything. Because now the public views this as a representation of agency performance in the area of IT management. Now whether that's right or wrong, and whether the dashboard allows that, that perspective to be, to be presented accurately, you know, I mean, that's a, <laughs> I'll just tell you, you know, the world according to John, it doesn't do it. It doesn't get there. And, but I think it could. And I think the reason that we have the dashboard is that it's supposed to be a tool that we as managers can use to manage our investments. I think that's Vivek's vision. And I think, it, and I think that's a good vision. But really what we need to do, and what I've been talking to Vivek about in particular, is we need to take the good work that is already being done out in the agencies, and we need to say, okay, within, those, within 
within the strategic planning, if you look to the, to the left side here on this slide, we all do strategic <coughs> planning, or we're supposed to. Now, how many of you have sat in a meeting and had anybody ask you whether something aligned with your strategic plan or not? Okay, that's good. If I had asked that question probably a year or two ago, I mean, there probably wouldn't have been maybe one or two or two hands. I mean, now we've got at least a handful of hands. Has ever done that? Handful of hands. And so, and so then you've got on the the next uh, air process area in, you've got architecture. We spend a lot of money on architecture. And architecture has a lot of value. But what is, what is architecture in its simplest form? It's a plan for satisfying requirements. That's it. It's a plan for satisfying business requirements. And business requirements might be, you know, you know we, we can go through the semantics of all this. Some people, when I say business, they, they automatically think, okay, financial management, acquisitions, procurements, and things like that. But when I say business, I mean the business of government, whatever your mission is. And so architecture should, should be your plan for how you're going to satisfy requirements. I would venture to say that in the past, what we've done is we've said, okay, We've got to take a look across our entire organization and we've got to, we've got to interrogate what we do and we've got to document that to the nth detail. So why are we doing that? I mean, it gives us a lot of information, right? But what's the business value? What's the business problem that that approach solves? I mean, if you, if, you don't, if you don't take architecture into consideration within a business context, then you're missing the boat. And I can say this because I was an architect. A couple different places. And now I don't care because I'm CIO. <laughs> no, I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. Any, any CIO knows what architecture can do for you. And... Uh, and, and actually, I think that that's part of the reason that I am a CIO now, is because I do understand that. If you, if you go into the middle column here, this is sacred ground. This is where your programs are developed. This has nothing to do with information technology. Nothing. Nothing. Let me repeat that. Nothing. This is where your programs are developed. Typically, the people that develop the perspective here are who? They're your budget folks. Your budget folks that say, oh, well, we need this amount of money to do something. Or we need this amount of money to do something. And some people are, some organizations are better at this than others. You know, DOD I know has a, has a, has a structured process for, for looking at you know, what it takes to do things, probably more so than, uh, than most, uh, most agencies. But I will tell you, and, and you know, again, just because we're, we're in the era of open government, I will tell you that HHS probably doesn't do this tremendously well. And that's not, you know, uh, you know, some kind of a commentary on the, uh, the competency of HHS. It's just a, a, a remark about the process. The process doesn't include the opportunity to take a look at the